For a lot of people who have recovered from COVID, we're talking about brain fog. Yeah, brand new research from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai finds troubling long-term memory problems. The study looked at 750 people, an average of more than seven months after their COVID diagnosis. It found 24% impairment in memory encoding, 23% in recall, and 18% in processing speed. There are other deficits as well. So some strong numbers there. Mm -hmm. Here to tell us more about the study is the lead author, clinical neuropsychologist, Dr. Jacqueline Becker. Doctor, thanks for joining us this morning. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Yeah, like John just said, the percentages sound a little scary. Did they surprise you? Yeah, we were definitely surprised, especially considering the relatively young cohort um, that we had in our study. So it was about an average age of 49. Um, and it was across the, the spectrum of disease severity. So we saw, you know, those with mild, moderate, and even severe COVID um, having these sort of effects about seven and a half months after their COVID diagnosis. All right, let's talk a little bit about average memory impairments. Were some of the 750 patients normal in their brain functions? So, um, Interestingly, memory impairment was actually not the predominant um, deficit that we saw. What we saw is difficulties with something called executive functions, which are, you know, primarily in the frontal lobe of the brain. But the way that it works is, you know, no cognitive domain really works in isolation. And so um, there are domains and functions that impact other functions, such as memory. And so we found that a decrease in this sort of processing efficiency was what it was likely impacting patients' memory function. Um, go ahead. Or you, can, you can keep going. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> no, what, I wanted to ask you, what exactly is encoding ability? We're going through all these percentages, but a lot of people don't know what encoding ability is. It's 24 yeah. with it's 24 percent impairment. What does that mean yeah, exactly? So that's yeah, so exactly. So encoding is actually the ability to learn information and take it in. Um, and so what happens is you, you know, say that I give you a word list, you learn this information, you learn the word list, that's encoding, you take it in. Then if I ask you later to recall it, you have to pull it out of your memory and that's recall. And so later on, what we have is we can look at your ability to retain that information over time. And that is what correlates most with memory function. And what we saw is that retention actually was not impacted. In other words, hmm. patients were able to recognize these words later on, suggesting they did get in, but patients were having trouble pulling it out and were having trouble learning the information. So what that tells us is that there is likely something called executive dysfunction, which, you know, executive functions, I like to think of it as akin to sort of like a CEO of the brain, where it sort of helps us you know, mediate tasks and make sure we start on time and end on time and, you know, that we're motivated and goal directed and we're able to multitask. And so when there is a decrease in those functions, it can impact our memory and make us feel like we're not remembering things. Um, it's sort of like, you know, when you walk into a room and you say, you know, well, what, what was I doing here? I'm not sure. And then if someone cues you, you might recall it. Um, and so that's sort of what we saw is that there is some difficulty with the, the, you know, initial like learning and recall of memory, but not so much with retention and ability to hold information over time. So what's causing it, though? Do you have any idea so what's we, causing Unfortunately, we still don't know. I think, you know, in, chronic inflammation is one of the indirect effects that is, you know, has gained a lot of popularity recently. And a lot of studies are suggesting that that may be the case. Um, you know, other direct causes such as, you know, seeing the virus in the brain, for example, in autopsy studies is another hypothesis. Um, a lack of oxygen to the brain for those with severe disease is another potential mechanism. Um, unfortunately, it's just, it, it's still too early, even though we've been in this pandemic for a while now, it's too early for us to really say what's causing um, these cognitive impairments. Mm -hmm. what, what we do know also is that with hospitalized patients and other diseases, we do see a lot of this decreased functioning over time. And a lot of it can take a, you know, a good bit of time to recover, such as in um, acute respiratory yeah. distress syndrome or patients who've been in the ICU yeah. just by virtue of 
you know, hospitalization and the treatments, yeah. being on a ventilator, et cetera. Yeah, uh, so much more to learn. We do appreciate your time this morning, though. It's, it's fascinating information. My Clinical pleasure. neuropsychologist Jacqueline Becker from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Thanks again for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. You too. Have a great day, doctor.